y'all. Welcome back to my channel, Milan Garcon. I am the girl in the picture, Milan Garcon. I'm so excited. I'm so sorry for screaming. I'm trying to stop screaming at the end of my videos, but y'all, I really be excited. Drum roll, please. We are finally at the one year mark of my transition. This is like so crazy. I can't believe that a year went by so fast. So <sighs> let's talk about it. Who would have thought a year ago I would be where I'm at today? I know I definitely did not see that in the cards. I mean, let's break it down, right? We're going to talk about the milestones. We're going to talk about, you know, you know, when did I know I was trans? Oh, all of that trans one-on-one, which I really want us all to move past. We're going to get to it. But just to break it down, like a year ago from, from right now, I was like preparing to walk a ball. I was um, really thinking about medically transitioning and the effects that it has on your body. Like it, it just became a constant thing on my mind. I always knew that that was something that I would probably do, but I was never really honest with myself and others about it. Letting go of the stereotypes and letting go of the feelings and emotions that society has told you to have regarding trans people and learning to, you know, build your own thoughts on what it is to be trans. I think that comes with time and age. And I'm one of those people that kind of transition a bit later in life. Although a lot of people don't know my age, which I love it that way. Let me focus for like two seconds. There we go. Every week is almost different with a hormone shot. It's like, you gotta be super careful. You're really doing some at home stuff. But what I was saying was a year ago, I took my time making this decision. I made the decision for myself and nobody else. I didn't do it because anyone else was doing it. I really took my time and thought about, you know, is this something that I am willing to do? And, you know, just having that adult discussion with yourself. Like, you know, you're taking one a lot medically when you start to do at-home injections, when you are putting hormones in your bodies and changing your body's chemistry. That's a lot. And you have to make sure that that's something that you're ready for. And I think that every girl, every trans guy, you know, should definitely have those discussions with yourself. If you have a therapist, you have people at home that you could trust and all of that, you know, talk to the people around you, talk to yourself as much as you can, because the whole experience is going to be a shocker. Every single day is going to be a new thing happening, especially within that like first one year. Let's talk about like when I knew I was trans. I, I, I always, I always like to tell people the story like this. I didn't have the vernacular. Let me just make sure it's not bleeding. Yeah, we good. I didn't have the vernacular to say as a young person from Cleveland, Ohio, oh, I'm trans. Like, I just, I didn't know what trans was. I just knew I was very different from other kids. And my family made that known by, you know, the men in my family being like, oh, don't play in the kitchen. Don't be in the kitchen with the women. Go play with the boys. I would go out with the boys and I had the most terrible time of my life. Like, I would just not relate to anything or anybody um being told i couldn't play dolls on my cousins when that's just naturally what i wanted to do it wasn't like i saw something and was like oh dolls it was like two options outside playing ball inside playing dolls i'm playing the dolls like let's go so that's when i knew that something was different about me and then kids in school all the time why you gotta act like a girl you act like a girl you talk like a girl you walk like a girl you dance like a girl all of these things Right? I just slowly started to come into myself to the point where once I graduated college and moved to New York, a few years later, I started transitioning. One thing about me, I've always been like this. If anybody knows me from, you know, back in the day on YouTube, which a lot of this, a lot of these videos are still here. Um, I'm, I've always been the same person. I've always had the same personality. I've always talked the same, moved the same, walked the same. The only thing that's been changing this past year are, you know, a lot of my physical attributes. I have a lot more, you know, chest than I've ever had before, of course, because this wasn't um, a part of my biological DNA. This is definitely hormones. Let's go through the milestones. So like within my first year, I've seen like my face get softer and that comes from like fat redistribution in your face. Meaning like the bones are not gonna change unless you get surgery. That just is what it is, honey. You're stuck with what you got. But your face will soften tremendously after being on hormone for a year and You'll really see like the full effects of like the hormone replacement therapy in like two years. And that's like from head to toe. But like HRT is going to really, it's, it's going to take its time on you. But you have to be consistent. And that's something that I could say. I 
These milestones that I'm giving you are like, I'm a girl, I've never missed a hormone shot. I've never missed a week. I've never missed a day of pills. Like I've, I've never missed it. Before I even break down all of the milestones, let's go ahead and talk about what hormones I'm on. So I'm on Estradol um, Valerate, which is the shot that you guys just saw me take. I take that once a week. I also take um, T blockers, which is the short, the street name for it, testosterone blockers, T blockers, of course, but um, the actual name is spirolactin. Then I take another form of estrogen, which really focuses on like the fatty tissue in your body and like gaining weight in your hips, your chest, your face. Supposedly makes your nose smaller. I, I personally say it makes your nose appear smaller because it makes your cheeks fuller. Now, all of these things together are what have given me my results to date. Um, I'm not really going to like go t too deep down into like the milligrams and how much and all of that. Just those are the three things that um, I take a part of, as, as a part of my hormone replacement therapy. Talk to your doctor, talk to your girls to see, you know, what might work for you. Because I know everyone does not have access to um, medically transition with a doctor. Some people have to get theirs, you know through trans family and friends, which is not always the safest, but listen, we live in a world that's trying to take away rights from us left and right. So sometimes you do have to do what you have to do. And it doesn't um it doesn't validate one girl's transition over another girl's transition, whether you have a prescription in your name or not. I just think that it's it's the safest way to do it. That's my hormone replacement therapy background, right? In the first like two to three months I started um feeling like tenderness in my chest area and I started to notice like the areola was spreading which was fab I started to real like um realize that there was like fatty tissue growing in my chest which was so exciting but they were like little knots little like balls like 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 little hard balls and slowly but surely month by month well I should say day by day week by week and month by month I continue to, you know, grow breast tissue to the point where, you know, I could put on a bra and actually have something inside of a bra. I have like an A cup now. I have on a cute little push up moment, but um, I'm very proud of my A cup and who knows? It might get bigger. This might just be where it's at. They might just shape out more. Who knows? And I think I'm at the point of my transition where I'm not clocking my body and like measuring things and like, like just, just continuously like analyzing my body to see like what's changed. Like, com like, like day to day comparisons. I've stopped that. That it was difficult to stop that. I don't even know, know when I noticed that I stopped it. But I remember getting to a point where it's like, I feel like nothing's changing. And I'm like, wait a minute, girl. That's because you are living in a mirror. Like a watch pot doesn't boil. So probably I would say like six to seven months in, I just kind of didn't care to like check my body every day. It just wasn't on my mind. I think because by that point, the mental and emotional part has started to really set in and whoop my ass. I then noticed one day I was like at work and I was like texting um, my good, good girlfriend, Julie. And I stood up because I was in like the handicap restroom. I stood up and it has a mirror in there. And I'm like, you know, pulling my pants back up, da, 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 da. And I just noticed like my hips were like starting to like spread. Like it wasn't like boom it wasn't just like straight down i used to be very 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 skinny i'm i'm still pretty small but i used to be very skinny like zero double zero like a year ago like double zero i'm a four now so i've gained 20 to 25 pounds i don't know exactly because last time i went to the doctor um it was a virtual appointment but i have definitely seen my butt get way bigger it's insane my face has gotten fuller my chest has gotten fuller my hips and butt has gotten much 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 fuller uh fuller my arms are like one of my favorite parts of my transition so i'm gonna turn it to the side y'all see how like if you could see like my arm has no definition like even when like i lift it like that's that and then like if i go like this it's like girl one of my favorite things is my arm. That probably is one of my favorite things that has changed. Even when I bring my arm up, there's no definition, y'all. I used to run track. So my body, I had like really ripped arms. I had ripped legs and I had like, um, not ripped, but very lean. And I, again, I was never that big. So you can always like see the cuts of my muscles. Um, and then I had like a six slash eight pack, right? Now, my stomach is just, like, cute and flat. I still have abs, but they're not, like, pack, 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 pack. It's just, like, two cute abs. And it's, like, cunt. I love that. I feel like I was really blessed 
the way everything kind of worked out because my thighs were big with muscle but as the muscle has broken down it's just turned into like soft tissue and then like the weight that I've gained is going on top of that so it really makes my lower half like fab like it makes it it gives me like a, a hourglass-ish figure like a slim thick figure you know what I'm saying and that's something that I know I was worried about a lot of girls worry about on hormones is like Am I going to gain weight in my lower half so I start to have more of a feminine figure? And I did because my thighs were always freaking huge. So now that they've lost the, the muscle, the leanness, the cutness, it's just fatty tissue. It's fab, honey. It's fab. Oh, some physical changes that you can't see. The amount of strength that you lose on hormones when you're going MTF, male to female, you don't realize like, the 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 physical disadvantage between women and men if you know you're not working out at some high capacity like if you're just going off whatever strength you got like realizing that like certain things I used to be able to pick up that weren't heavy like are super heavy now walking up the stairs is like whoa I have no energy anymore um like a pickle jar like before it'd be like pop now I gotta do the pop 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 do it again can somebody help me it's like crazy and I think that when that when that first started happening I was getting like really frustrated with myself because I thought something was wrong with me and I thought that was like either being lazy or just whatever like oh I can do this and then like it just hit me one day like wait a minute you're losing strength hmm the effects of losing muscle mass hmm it's working so that was like a yay and a whoa like damn do I really want to lose strength because then I started thinking about damn well if somebody tried kidnapping me or somebody like you know something happens and I end up in a confrontation like can I defend myself the way I'm used to being able to defend myself like feeling like oh I can do like like whatever like we can fight like no like it's different now it's it's different now it's different now honey no we can't no no we're not doing that my my mindset changing and how I view myself, how I value myself, how I think about myself. I've never been so insecure in my life. And when I say like I've never been so insecure in my life, it's not like I feel like I'm ugly or I feel like I'm not worthy or, you know, I feel like my personality has changed. No, not at all. But I feel like I've never been so analytical about every single part of my body and how it looks. I feel like my mind has kind of shifted to... I'm beautiful however I show up to what beauty standards am I reaching and where am I falling short and a lot of that is you know being a woman you just look at yourself through the lens of society sometimes but then you have to take that lens off and just see yourself and love yourself and adore yourself and tell yourself that and believe it and be it and and, and you kind of get that back the whole mental space changing was a lot like you're way more emotional on hormones within your transition because you are not filled with testosterone like you're filled with estrogen now. So you you pretty much go in and out of mood swings. It's very easy to cry for things that make you happy or sad or indifferent. Sometimes I cry just because I don't know what I'm supposed to be thinking about. And it just is overwhelming. I feel moments of cloudiness in my brain, which I never felt before. I also feel moments of being super overwhelmed, which... I've experienced that before because I like to keep myself really busy and I like to try to be hyper productive, which isn't always healthy. But I feel like lately I've been really like overwhelmed easily. So that's something that I am, um, you know, getting used to. Oh, at the one year mark, therapy is needed. Okay. I will say get it sooner than later. Like transitioning. I don't care if you think that you're fine or not. It, you're going to go through some patches where you need somebody there that is anchored down and that is there for you and that you know is going to be there when they're supposed to be there because everyone has shit going on in life. So everybody can't stop because bitch, it'll be some, some, some weeks where girl, it'll be two whole weeks and you just feel like you cried every day. Everybody can't be there for you every fucking day to take on all of that. You know, that's a lot. So you need somebody there that you know is going to be there so that you feel secure and you feel like you have somewhere to go and you don't, you know, feel lost or alone and like in that situation but with saying that don't want this video to be super long i already know it's gonna be super long but i'm 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 really happy and i hope that anyone else out there that is thinking about starting their journey or you know wants to start their journey now i say do it sooner than later as long as you know that that's what you really want um because you know these ain't reversible so 
make sure that, you know, it's adding to your happiness. And transitioning shouldn't be the only thing in, 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 in the world making you happy. You also need to figure out what else in life um, is going to make you happy. Do you want a partner? Do you want a career? Do you want, you know, kids? Do you want all of those things? I see kids, career, and, you know, the full family situation down the line. How the fuck that's going to happen? In this dating climate, we don't know. But when I figure it out, I will I, I will spill the tea. But I'm going to have to lock mine down first. But with that being said, you know, thank you guys for, you know, sticking by my channel for going on like nine years now. It started in 2015. So it's 2024. So yeah, 2025. It'll be 10 years of me on YouTube. So I just want to say shout out to everybody that's been here. Shout out to me for, you know, coming back to YouTube and working my butt off to get you guys these videos weekly. Please feel free. Always ask me questions in the bio. I mean, ask me questions in the comments. But um, yeah, my advice for anyone that is, you know, thinking about transitioning is to make sure that you get some therapy. And you can get it before, you can get it during, you can get it, you know, down the line. But make sure that you have that resource or know where to get that resource. I say have at least one to two good people in your family or chosen family or friends um, that, you know, can hold you down through those tough times. And also really, really do your best to try to access um, your hormones from a doctor. That way, you know, you can have your blood test and know what's going on in your body and making sure that everything is safe and that your levels are where they're supposed to be so you can transition gracefully. And with that being said, it's been real and it's been fun. And I'm going to have to catch y'all in my next one. Mwah!